Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. In this tutorial, we're going to look at HSL secondaries in Adobe Premiere Pro. All right, thanks to John Telcher for requesting this tutorial on how to use the secondaries in the Lumetri color panel. We're going to select colors and make changes. And you can use this to completely change the color of something like a shirt or to brighten up skin tones or uh, remove a bit of the, the uh, uh, sharpness or clarity in skin. Let's go have a look. So I'm gonna show you three examples here. All three, have already had changes. So she's not wearing a green shirt. Let's go to our color workspace. If you don't see this, time to update. Over here on the right hand side in our Lumetri color panel, all the way down to the bottom is the HSL secondary, hue saturation lightness secondary. And the first thing you need to do is to select a color. You're setting a key. This is no different than green screen keying or any kind of keying. That's the hardest part here, is you have to find an isolation part of the area. So if you're trying to isolate one color and that color occurs in multiple places, um, you're gonna have probably have to ask, add a mask or a mat to fix that. But let me just turn this effect off and you'll see the color is actually purple in her shirt and we've changed it to this green. Okay, let's reset everything here and we'll start again. I'm gonna get rid of my color change too. So you'll see three eyedroppers. The first is the initial eyedropper color. Then there's an add and a subtract. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper color and pick a purple. And what I'm trying to do is pick a purple that's as closely represented as all of the colors. So you're not gonna get one purple because there's lots of different um, shadows and highlights going on. So that's the initial setting right here. If you turn on the color gray, you'll actually see, turn on the color gray, you'll actually see um, where your selecting this and you can see it's selecting some of it but not the darker parts in here so that's where you add to this and, and you can either leave this on or off if i click on the plus come over here and click on the darker parts it now adds to this and if i select too much i can minus it out by clicking on minus now there are also primaries here uh, if you need but uh, i think this is a, a pretty unique color you can also change whether this is color black, white on black, or color gray, depending on how you like to look at this. And we can uh, turn this on here so we're just looking at it in that area while we're affecting it. I like to leave it on this setting here. Now, I could continue to uh, add more colors to this. But it's also useful to understand the hue, saturation, lightness controls. The hue, as you see here, is going to go to completely different colors. So what I tend to do is click on the middle and drag this around and seeing how it's affecting it. And it doesn't look like the, the hue is going to make this any better. It's already selecting the proper hue. This is the amount of saturation. If we noodle this around a little bit, you see as we move this to more saturation, it's actually selecting less of this. So I'm gonna leave that where it is. These two are the fall off and range. So if you start dragging this out, you see it's selecting more. And this is the overall range of what we're selecting. So as I move this in here, sure enough, I am selecting more of that shirt, but look at what we're getting. A little bit up here in the top that we probably don't want to change. So we're going to move that back. Same thing over here. Here's the lightness. As we move that around, we're going to select more parts of that lightness. And you can see there we're grabbing a little bit more of that lightness value right here. Just starting to get a little bit of that in there. All right. So now that we've got that area selected, if we drag this over here, we can change that overall color. And I wanted that green, so I just dragged it down here at the bottom. Now, you can also denoise and blur this. So back in the effect here, 
if if what you're selecting um, has too many harsh edges, you can denoise that and blur. Now you can blur this too much and the effect's going to go around, but it doesn't hurt to have a little bit in this area, not too much blur. If we go a little further down, we can change the color here from a master color, or we can look at shadow, midtone, and highlight. So if we only wanted to affect one certain part of that, we could. I'm going to leave that on master. And then down at the bottom, temperature, tint, contrast, sharpen, and saturation. So here we can change the overall temperature, or the tint, or the overall contrast, sharpen that, or saturate that. Okay, let's look at a different example here. I've already taken the time to apply another Lumetri effect. You can see the Lumetri effect is getting all over her face, but it's getting some of these areas over here on the right-hand side. And that's just because the color that's in her face is also in those um, plants over there. If we turn this effect on and off, you can see it's lightening up that color and really makes that face pop. Now, if we wanted to, we could take the overall sharpness down and you can see that softens her face out. If we've got too much blur in here, then that softening is going to ha uh, hurt the eyes. So this really isn't some of the beauty plugins that are out there that will select the skin, but not the edges, because you want things like the edges of the mouth, the nose, the eyes to remain very sharp and high quality and the skin to be blurred. So. You can reduce the sharpness a little bit here, but I wouldn't call this a substitute for some of those other beauty plugins. All right. So if we had this and we needed to just mask her out, I'm going to select her and you'll see in the Lumetri color panel in the effects controls, I can drag and, and click and drag a mask out here. Now the effect is only occurring within that area. If I turn the effect on and off, you can see it's not affecting those, the plants over there anymore. So now it's just her face. Turn that on and off. And there we go. So that's a combination of a mask and the secondaries. And then lastly, I'm using it to just remove the color completely. So I've selected the color here and completely desaturated that color to nothing to give me a white. Now, if you did want to, let's go back to her over here. If I did want to now have another secondary, maybe for the sky or maybe for her shirt, the only way to do this is to add another Lumetri effect. So in our effects, If we add another Lumetri effect, make sure that one is selected, and now go down to our, our secondary. Remember that this isn't selected uh, yet, so we're going to select that area, and we'll Blur this a bit, denoise it, and now we'll go and change this to a different color. So we've got two secondaries now. There's the first one with her shirt, and there's the other one with her face. And you can have as many of these you as you want, with the simple understanding that Premiere Pro was never meant to have lots of Lumetri color panels on one or uh, Lumetri color effects on one clip. So if you're upwards around uh, five or six of these, um, you might be pushing your system a little bit too much. But that's it. Hopefully uh, that's informative for you, John. And uh, really that's all that secondaries are. It's all about that key effect, making sure that you get the best key possible to isolate that color change. All right. 
Hopefully you found this informative. Uh, if you're new to Video Reveal, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us some more? Join us over on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you looking your best. Thank you.